That is who you really have to beat here. We have a three-player group, and so that means that we have two players that advance out of each group, and by now the audience can hear us as well. Welcome, everybody. Yes. That chair was for the audio technicians out back. We got it. All right, we got some sound going here. That's awesome, and you're absolutely right. Stardust is the third player in this group. Obviously, on paper, the favorites to advance through. These guys, on paper, are fighting for second place, but any of these players have the capacity to beat anyone yeah. else on a good day. Stardust is pretty tough, though, man. Yeah, but we have seen really impressive performance, especially out of Bonnie when you were looking at his WCS Challenger match. That was absolutely amazing. Now we're going into game number one here, the Gfinity G3 Group A. We have our Terran versus Terran. It is starting to the top right of the map in blue for Team Liquid, Bonnie. And his opponent spawning in the bottom left-hand corner as the Red Terran player that some of you might know him as the Devil Terran playing for Evil Geniuses. It is the Muslim. <laughs> Got some good local support here. Of course, uh, for, for the British Terran player. Not currently living in the UK. I believe he's currently uh, somewhere out in the Nordics, possibly in Sweden. But uh, coming back to play in his home tournament here, and uh, well, pretty nice game. We got to start us off on Overgrowth. Yeah, Overgrowth being the first map here, and we're all talking a bit about the Terran versus Terran, and especially the two players at hand. We have, as Doriza already mentioned, Bunny currently on a really nice streak. His match that he played against Saxri in the Challenge League was absolutely amazing after being down two games in the best of five. He came back. It was, of course, a very different matchup, but it was quite. A good example to see the resilience of Bunny in a series like this. And he will need the resilience at uh, this tournament as well. If you look at the Terran versus Terran for him, overall he's a 29% win ratio. When you only look at the mirror matches offline, but then you eliminate the Korean players for a second out of the equation, and suddenly his win ratio jumps up to 63%. So 
pretty big obstacle here yeah. for the Muslim to overcome, but of course also a bit of an indicator of how strong those Koreans actually are. Exactly right. I mean, they, uh, they there is no getting around their dominance at the moment, and that's the reason why Stardust is the favorite to advance out of this group. But we've seen Bunny beat Stardust before. Admittedly, we have to go back to last year for a qualifier for a Hope Story Cup. Uh, but it was a while ago, he does have the capability to do it, and more importantly, he's a lot better now than he is back then, even though Stardust is as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to that match, but the Muslim never count this guy out. He's the sort of player who he can get up after a ridiculously heavy loss and really mentally steal himself. And you occasionally see him at tournaments where you think, this guy is on a down run of form here, he can't do very much, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that determination shines through and he plays a fantastic start. Definitely right. I mean, right now in the game, actually, what we're seeing here is Bunny starting things off with a much faster gas than the Muslim, who decided to not go for a Reaper initially, but started things off with the Marines. Overgrowth is one of those maps where you have a lim very limited area where you can jump into your opponent's main base, and the Muslim is currently just backing his hopes of catching the Reaper early on, shutting down the scouting information of Bunny as soon as he can and is not starting with the Reaper at all, but instead just getting those first few Marines out, going straight for the Reactor and the Expansion, whereas Bunny, of course, is also starting with the Command Center behind this. Yeah, so a slightly later Command Center popping out here right now uh, for the Muslim. And for those of you who are wondering, or those of you in the audience who might not be watching StarCraft that often, the worker units, the SCVs, they're not really, really badly coordinated hard hats. Those are, in fact, birthday caps, because StarCraft is celebrating its fourth birthday. I don't know how long the workers are going to end up having these party hats out of... Ooh! Reaper, not exactly welcome there. Will just about escape with its life, but now Bunny's going to think twice. And Bunny has the scouting information now. The one difference that you can really see when we're looking currently at the building placement is that Bunny already placed his own expansion down on the bottom of the map, meaning he's not losing that time that you need to flow the over to the command center, then over to the mineral line. So Bunny already in a pretty decent position there. He must have just playing it a little bit safer, a little bit closer to home, whereas Bunny is currently just calling the shots here. Always in a position where you can see the command center floating. And of course, he saw it when he jumped up on the high ground. But we see the Muslim now going straight for the starport, which Bonnie does as well, getting the second gas behind it. And the Muslim starts with the Hellion production for the potential drop. And the other thing that Bunny's got going down uh, on the uh, next to his natural expansion as well is the bunker, of course, Kaldor. So we've got the Reaper spotting that actually, if the Muslim is to build a bunk to defend his natural expansion, it's going to come down a lot later. And that's obviously going to put our evil geniuses player just a little bit on edge, wanting to make sure there isn't any sort of sneaky attack coming in. Yeah, for the Muslim, it's going to be uh, really important what he can uh, do with his first medivac that he builds. We have him already with a fair marine count, looking at seven. He's going for the Hellions here. So what he's going to try and do is just drop in his opponent's main base, maybe just use those Hellions at the front door and trying to get into the natural. But Bunny's bunker is, of course, going to help him quite a bit. And, well, we have the Danish player now going straight for the cloak. It's a bit delayed, of course, if you compare to how fast he could have gotten it out there. But still, that cloak is going to do a lot of damage if the Muslim is prepared. But the Muslim will, of course, know that something's going on here. And the Reaper actually getting into the main base and sees everything here. That's great for Bunny. Yeah, this is fantastic news for him as well. He knows that his Banshee's on the way. He spots that there's no add-on uh, on the tech lab as well. So he knows that there are Marine Tellians out there. There's not going to be anything other than Medivacs popping out of that starboard and gets away with his life as well. Oh, have I spoken too soon? No, just about gets away there. Well, he's going to get a good trait, yeah, at least if he wants to, and he gets wow. the SCV. That Reaper would have most likely died anyways, at least to the four Hellions that we currently see on screen. What the Muslim is, of course, immediately doing, he's throwing down two missile turrets, one per mineral line. He knows that something's coming out of Bunny there, and it's very likely going to be a Banshee from what he's seen so far. But Bunny has a really nice setup here, and he could do a lot of damage even with the missile turrets around, especially if the Muslim just decides to use his, uh, yeah, all of his Marines at the top of the map. We see him with a pretty decent count in Hellions, 66 for both of them, but here comes the drop with the Marines. And there's only one Marine in the bunker. That's actually not a whole lot. All the units of Bunny are currently on the high ground just waiting for the dropship to appear. Exactly. He's going to have to use his Hellions incredibly well here. Targeting down the bunker. A couple of SPs coming into repair. We'll get there in time, but will the bunker survive? No, the Marine fires a little bit too much. This wall, though, doing a tremendous job so far. The Banshee on the other half of the map desperately trying to pick away some SCVs. And the Muslim is going for a very, very aggressive opener here. Supplies currently 67 to 63. And wow, that's a lot of supply yeah. depots going down. He loses three supply depots. This currently supply block that Cloak Banshee is helping out quite a lot. And the, immediately the Hellions moving in again. All of the Marines are already gone. And that means that the anti air is not existing any longer. That Banshee, even with a Cloak, uh, with a a quick orbital scan cannot be taken out. A very nice move here by Bunny and oh. doing a lot of damage to his opponent, but the drops of the Muslim 
still taking a few SCVs down, both of them actually, with seven SCVs killed so far. Yeah, exactly. The worker count more or less even, just one more for Bunny right now, two more, 37 to 35. And what do you think about this aggressive approach that we've seen from the Muslim? Because the one huge difference between our two players here as the drop comes in again, very nicely picked off actually, uh, he, he's got no wall. I mean, Bunny had the bunker and the supply depots. They're okay, they got destroyed. But the Muslim's natural is completely open to attack. Well, with the opening that Bunny chose, he didn't really need a wall there. And to be honest, I like Bunny's position a lot. He kept the Banshee alive that was down at the natural. He's now attacking at two fronts at the same time. Banshee at the bottom, one in the main base. That Viking alone just doesn't really cut it here. It will maybe even take one down. Nope, there's the cloak once again. So I really like the position that Bunny is currently in. Like, he's doing a lot of aggression. He killed a few extra SCVs of his opponent. The Havasek count is in his favor with 44 to 37. So I feel that he's currently the one who's really starting to call the shots. The Muslim's attack was great, but he just didn't do as much as he was hoping for. I'm a little bit surprised as well. We've seen a lot of players, uh, especially like uh, in Korea, We've got some uh, Terran players who are sometimes are in this position defending against this Banshee aggression. And we typically see a fairly quick Raven pop out after the first Viking in some TVT games. But Bunny hasn't opted for that, I think, in this game. Uh, sorry, the Muslim, rather. I mean, the Muslim was trying to just get the detection, first of all, with the missile mm -hmm. turret, and then also just working uh, with the scans that he, of course, has available here. But he was pro one at this point. And he's already in a position where he builds his third base, so he's faster with that too. He has a really solid position set up for himself. He doesn't have any medivacs just yet to really help him out there. He's currently building the first two, but just in general, he's a step ahead of his opponent. The one thing that he also has is Stim. The Muslim doesn't have Stim yet, so that's another upgrade that he's currently getting, as well as, well as also the uh, combat shield. So in everything that he's currently doing, Bunny is just a tiny step ahead. Yeah. Terran versus Terran can just flip so fast, but at this point, definitely the upper hand for the Team Liquid player. And the Banshee's coming in now, trying to do a little bit more harass. That one's actually, uh, yeah, very close to going down. There are only 20 hit points on it. Is he gonna waste a scan out of it as well? He's deliberately staying there to force it, gets the scan. Banshee goes down, but not before it gets a solid bit of money's worth. And now we see the Muslim moving out with a follow-up attack. With the Siege Tank here, this could end up doing a lot of damage if he gets the right position. And Bunny looks like he might be in a good place to see it coming. Yeah, the thing is that we are in a position where the Muslim was even forced to build two additional missile turrets. Usually he just tried to keep them at the minimum, but he had one in each mineral line, and that just wasn't enough. He's moving out now, and if you look at the army composition, he's looking at two tanks that Bunny is controlling. He himself is only two as well. So Bunny is actually really well set up to meet this attack. He has more army supply. 54 against 49, he has a very good unit composition. He must limit with a third tank, but we still have the Banshee, we have, the, we have everything set up. Excellent snipe. Hey, there we go. That's the extra missile turret trying to pay for itself there. That Banshee goes down, and uh, Bunny knows exactly what's coming, of course. Both players scanning each other. It looks like the Muslim's going to be taking an offensive position at Bunny's defensive uh, watchtower there. Oh, there's a massive stim from Bunny trying to get in before the tanks each up. They do see up. Are they going to do enough damage? A fantastic concave coming out here from Bunny, and the Muslim is pushed back. He does keep a lot of the medevacs, those gas-intensive units, alive, but that was definitely, definitely a big blow for him. Man. Major, major win here for Bunny, and he fought the entire fight with a plus one attack upgrade already. That was something that the Muslim was still missing. The Muslim finished that upgrade just after the fight was over. So for Bunny, that was the perfect timing. He couldn't have gotten any better than that. He had a very good contact with the Marines as well. Went and took down those two tanks with no problem whatsoever. With all those scans, he was of course making sure that he knew exactly about the position. But the Muslim was positioned. Now Bunny with a counter drop moving in there. Not a lot of units for the Muslim currently. He doesn't have the army supply. It's 80 against 45. The drop on the high ground. Two tanks on the other end. Could do a massive amount of damage here. But Bunny just has way too much moves in. GG. And GG called by the Muslim. Bunny with a one. Great game that we saw there by Bunny and that first fight that we had, it was just the perfect timing for him. Those upgrades not ready for the Muslim yet. He gets a very good engagement too. And the Muslim at that point was already when he was starting to trail behind a bit. He didn't have the third base. He needed to do damage. There was no other way. If he doesn't do damage with the attack, Bunny sets up the third base, gets yeah. the better income, and gets farther and farther ahead in the game. So a couple of things about that game as well. You could tell the Muslim was always going to be going for a very aggressive setup. Wasn't walling at the front, was constantly streaming units across the map. Of course, that didn't work. But something else to point out as well, Bunny wasn't just gearing up for that one attack, which admittedly went very well for him with the plus one. He 
you could see him thinking for the future as well. When that game finished, both players were researching plus one armor, but Bunny had the second engineering bay and the armory already coming down, thinking about what would happen if this drop does not work, can I still get ahead in upgrades later? And uh, just very, very solid play coming out of that. He also had all the essential upgrades, like he had Stim earlier, he had Combat Shield earlier. They didn't really come into play yet when the fight started. They were both ready for it. The Muslim, of course, trying to hit that timing there, but he didn't get an edge at all. And those Banshees, I mean, they delayed him a bit. Then later, of course, the Banshee goes down against the missile turret, but still, at this point, it's already just too late. So we have a 1-0 lead in the best of three. And at this point, we are going, we're going to look at King Seon Station, which is going to be the next one. Yeah, that's going to be the next map. I think if we need a third map, we're going to be going into the merry-go-round as well in this particular best of three. It's Should actually quite interesting that both players are currently also talking about the game, and the Muslim was asking Bunny if Bunny thinks that he was ahead after the initial push with the Hellions and the Marines, and Bunny immediately responds like, no, there's absolutely no way that we were ahead there. So the Muslim apparently looking at the graphs after the game, but Bunny really said right off like, no, I think I was actually ahead at this point. I did more damage with the Banshees, had a really solid position there, and I don't think he did enough. So the big question now, I think, for game number two, a lot of very successful Banshee play in game one. A, are we going to see the Banshees pop out again? And B, are we, is our response from the Muslim going to be different than just building those initial missile turrets? Because to be honest, they weren't that effective in game number one. Well, we're going to find out now going into game number two. Starting to the top left, we have in blue our Team Liquid Terran player. One game up in the best of three series here in Group A at Gfinity G3. It is Liquid Bunny. And fighting back from a 1-0 deficit, the home player at Gfinity G3, representing evil geniuses. Can he do it? The Devil Terran, it is the Muslim. And of course, since we find ourselves in a three-player group, every single map that you play, every single best of three is so important. You can't yeah. allow yourself to make any mistakes here. This is a major tournament. We not only have $30,000 prize money, but we also have a lot of WCS points. We actually have the top three of the WCS standings here at the tournament itself. So it's going to be a massive tournament. Later on, we're going to have, like, uh, for example, also a group where Robbie is playing. We have Jachi here. We have, like, MC here. So many just top-notch players. And it's going to be very, very difficult to go to the second day. From, yeah. all, from every group, two players will advance. So it's only one player that is going to drop out today, which will leave us with eight players left tomorrow. Exactly. And uh, every single match, like you said, is important. Even if one player loses twice, the remaining third game will determine who finishes first and second in the group. It massively affects seeding for tomorrow. You, of course, want to be playing someone who is runner-up rather than one their group as well. And uh, that could very well determine the difference between an eight, uh, like a top 12, top eight, top four kind of finish. So you want to get as far as possible when this much money, this many WC points are on the line. The interesting thing for both of the players that are currently playing, and so for every player in Group A, is that they already know that the player they're going to face tomorrow, if they advance, is going to be a Zerg player. We have an all Zerg true. group, and they are facing the players that are going to advance from that, so they already know the matchup that they would have to play in the next round. That group's going to get messy, man. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of ZBZ. In this game now, we have for the Muslim a gas first, starting with the barracks delayed, whereas Bunny here was getting the gas of the refinery later than the Muslim, not really opting for that version. But Bunny is getting that scout out. So he moves into his opponent's space and he sees immediately, all right, you already have your factory. You started with the gas first here. So you are going to do, to try and be aggressive because yeah. that's what the Muslim has to do right now. Bunny will have the faster expand, will have the better economy and the Muslim is trading that economy off for a lead in tech. And that lead in tech then has to just translate into damage done or he will start falling behind. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, that gas first, of course, make sure you get that 100 gas. By the time your barracks finishes, immediately put down the factory as a result and pump as many units as possible out. So Bunny, able to scout that, immediately sees it and just goes back home. He knows exactly what he has to do right now. He's got an economic advantage, but now he needs to hold off the aggression and try and keep the Muslim in his base. And this Reaper would be a pretty good step one. Yeah, the Reaper getting the scouting information again. What's important for him is, of course, also to find out a bit later, is there already a gas, a second gas taken? And he sees that at this point, we don't have a second gas. The starport was started. If that second gas comes down, you can be pretty certain that it's going to be a Banshee attempt by your opponent. If not, then there are, of course, like several drop variations that the Terran player could go for. But the Muslim has to do something. And Bunny, therefore, is already going for that bunker right at the front. Yeah. He has the expansion in place. And you can really see in the production tab that for Bunny so far, we have no expansion. So just underlining that point again, that he has to make up for that. 
He's done, um, he's done just really well with his scouting so far. Like you said, he knows to go and check for the Banshee first. Hellion popping in there, losing just over half its hit points, but managing to escape. And uh, he will, I believe, see that the bunker is going up in front. He knows, of course, that Bunny is looking to defend here. And uh, as a result, he's probably going to be swinging into the drop, maybe from the left-hand side, and try and get some damage in where it's less expected. And that's exactly what Bunny has to figure out right now. He needs to try and find out where the Muslim is going to hit and make sure that he's going to be ready with his units. In terms of the army supply, we have a bit of a lead for the Muslim. That's going to increase. Bunny is just still looking at his position, trying to just get the units out. He's going for the Hellions now, for the Marines. He knows that he is ahead in economy, but he has to stop this. And the Muslim, not going for the Banshees, going for the drop instead, sending all of his and we have an FCP, by the way, for Bunny, really smart so that he knows when the, where, when the Hellions would try to enter. But we have the drop going towards the natural, and immediately the Marines trying to go down at the bottom. But a few harvests has already taken out. He lost three in total. Here come the Hellions of the Muslim, sneaking in as well. And Bunny has to actually lift his commands and then fly back into his main base. Yeah, he hasn't lost that much yet. He's just waiting for the correct positioning to repel this attack. The Muslim at the moment really trying to make this count. Is he going to elevate her into the main from there? It looks like it's a bit of a standoff right now. He's not 100% sure. And here comes Bunny from the flank. It looks like he's positioning himself. It's a pretty smart move by Bunny, though, because right now the Muslim can't really do any, do any damage to the command center. There's a bunker and there are all the units lined up, so he can't get close enough. At the same time, the command center gives him vision of all the units down there. So as soon as the elevator happens, he can just move into the main base. Now he has his Viking ready. That puts so much pressure onto that medevac. Really smart move here by Bunny. Moves in. The Muslim is losing oh, wow. a lot of his units. He's going to lose everything here. Has his own Viking there, too, but he's already doomed. And a Muslim losing all of his units in the process. A thousand resources lost for the evil genius, whereas Liquid Bunny with 500 resources lost and the command center finds himself in a great position once again. That was a fantastic engagement there from Bunny. He lifted the command center, knew that he was going to wait until his Viking popped out, made sure he put the pressure on that medevac, and then you saw the three Hellions from Bunny wrap around kind of the northwest on the top left there, hammering down the Marines, and he just took a fantastic engagement position, knowing that he had to wait for the Viking. That was really, really smart play there, and really patient play as well from Buddy, because he knew he had to just lift up and say, look, you've got this position, I'm gonna wait till the time is right. What well, the Muslim is gonna try now is start to do some damage with the siege tanks. That's the one lead that he has. He has two tanks already, Bunny doesn't have a single one, he's instead opting for the Banshees now, and the Muslim, with him now just starting the command center, really has a lot of catching up to do. But with the siege tanks, if he gets a good position here, he could do a lot of damage, and he could really pressure that natural, but that's what he's trying to do here. But suddenly we have Bunny going for the counter aggression, moving in with the Hellions and sniping the SV down there on the low ground, really well done. That's gonna delay the expansion of the Muslim even further. Here with the siege tanks now, and he gets also the Viking of Bunny that would, and is now in a position where he wins the air battle, gets yep. the better vision and can utilize the entire range of the tank. Exactly, the Muslim is now trying to swing this back in his favor. The tank at home, by the way, that was unseaged on top of his ramp, did so much work against those Hellions, it probably prevented a couple more worker deaths. And now, Bunny's going, well, hang on a second, I can get siege tanks of my own to counter this, but the Muslim's already here and he's already sieged up, so positioning is so, so difficult right now. Here comes the Banshee going into the mineral line on the main base of the Muslim. There's one Viking and also a few Marines. He needs to get that scan, and there it is. Banshee should just be able to get outside yeah. of the scan range. Very well done so far. So Bunny trying to go for the counter aggression. Keep in mind, he still had an overall supply. He still has a good economy. But of course, these two siege tanks that are still starting to attack those two mineral patches to the boards to the left, they are still doing damage. Man, this Banshee is absolutely doing work right now. It's just not going to be enough. GG to Muslim. Wow, well that... I mean, that, that was a, a difficult end to the game for him there. He didn't have the scan energy for that Banshee. He knew that too much damage was done after his first attack was repelled. He was getting further and further behind. So now we have the 2-0. So as already kind of predicted by the Muslim, he apparently wasn't really uh,